and we are live. Are we? Yes, yes, we are. We are live. Excellent. Greetings and salutations, everybody, and welcome to another Saturday podcast live where I gather fascinating people from around the globe to come talk to you about important world building things. And today we're talking about life in the two dimensions, that is to say, life with one eye. And my guest today is Demetrius. Demetrius, how are you doing? I'm good. It's very weird. In most streams like that, I have been the one watching, not the one talking. So yeah, interesting times. Yeah, it's very, very odd to be interviewing my husband, as you folks know. Demetrius, of course, is the founder of World Anvil. He is, well, with me, that is. Um, uh, but he is a whole lot more. And of course, he was born with one eye. So today we're going to be talking about uh characters with one eye characters who wear eye patches characters who lose eyes and what the rehabilitation of that might be like as well as the strengths and weaknesses of characters with one, with one eyes because having one eye can introduce some complications but it's also a secret superpower so we're going to be talking about that as well and of course folks you can ask your questions so in capital letters question and then your question is how you ask that and uh, we'll be answering those at about the 45 minute mark well, just for those of you who haven't um, joined us before, you can check out all of our previous interviews and we have had some awesome ones recently right here and you can check out the podcast. Let me just throw these in the chat. Boom! So you should have links galore there. You should have links for our YouTube channel where you can go and catch up with the previous videos and you should have links for our podcast which comes out weekly and uh yeah yeah if you like to walk as you listen or garden as you listen or as some people have told me run after children as you listen then uh maybe the podcast is for you uh yeah so let me let me introduce demetrius properly because i've done a terrible job of that first of all demetrius i think you have to tell me about your t-shirt because it's glorious we need it to know there. I think it's the summer camp t-shirt from the last year, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And of course, summer camp is coming in three days time. Literally, in actually two days, 23 hours and 55 minutes from now. Exactly. To Excite. the second. Excite. Planar Spoons in the chat says, so many links, where do I start? Most of those are links for the same thing. So just have a look and see which platform you would like. And uh, have at it. Go crazy. I dare you. All right, let me introduce Dimitris properly. I believe it is time. My guest today is Dimitris Chavlidis. It's my best Greek accent. It's uh, enough. It's not mm. getting better, so uh, hopefully that's fine. Uh, Dimitris is a web developer, a UX researcher. He was a professional photographer. He is a designer. He holds a degree in social psychology. And he was a digital nomad before it was cool. And speaking of his degrees, he holds degrees in computing, social psychology, and graphic design. And he's worked in numerous startups as well as um, holding the position of CTO, that's Chief Technical Officer. Basically, big man with with hat make computer go good. That's, that's CTO. <laughs> yeah, that's the official definition. Um, of some of the top agencies in the country and uh, indeed in Europe. Uh, Demetrius left the corporate world to focus on his love, World Anvil, which is now his life's work. And uh, he is now the founder and CTO, yes, man in big hat, make computer go good, of World Anvil. The ultimate world building software, campaign manager, and now novel writing software and publishing software too. We do everything. Do we make coffee? Soon. Soon. And uh, yeah, tell us about Demetrius sent me this sentence. He loves cheese, lemon pies, and top hats. Where's your top hat, Demetrius? It's all true. I cannot hide them. They are hidden now, but I can <gasps> hear a lot of hot hats. The top hat behind the curtain. But perhaps yeah. most importantly, among his many accolades, most importantly for this interview, Demetrius was born with one eye. Tell us just I a little was. bit about that. Well... Like, why, why were you born with one eye? Why weren't okay, you born... Good. Many of us are born with two eyes. What was different? Okay, so I will start by saying two things, in fact, before we start. If you have any questions, guys, please feel free to uh, ask them. I have no problems answering any questions regarding my I.O. or anything like that. So if you want to know more, please do ask. We don't uh, catch on that. In terms of why was I born with one eye, I was very lucky. In fact, um, I will explain why, but most people that got what I got, 
are blind. And I mean, a very lucky 3%, in fact, of people who do not get blind from that. So when my mother was pregnant with myself, my dad had a kitty in his uh, work. And kitties are known at some point in their lifetime to, in fact, give out specific bacteria, which uh, is called toxop toxoplasmosis. And my mom got that from my dad. And toxoplasmo what toxoplasmosis can do is actually create dysmorphia in the face that can uh, become effectively brain damage or loss of hearing in one or both sides, loss of sight in one of both sides in my case. And yeah, I mean, I had the lightest of the versions, in fact, if you can actually think of that. Good genes, good genes. Uh, and I only got my eye damaged completely, so I wasn't have any actual eye bulb in my eye. And I have a little bit of a hearing issue, but that's very, very, very minor. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of which, Demetrius, could you just turn down your gain slightly on your microphone? You're, you're um, just blowing out just a little bit. Is that okay now? Yes, that's much better. Oh, good. I am sorry, guys. No, no, it's okay. As they say in the chat, it's just you're a little fuzzy. No, I like him that way. A little fuzzy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So, folks, as I said before, if you have questions, throw them into the, into the chat. Cap the letters question and then your question. And uh, we'll be answering those about the 45 minute mark. But let's let's jump straight in. What are some of the practical difficulties of having one eye? Like with everyday tasks, what is a challenge that people wouldn't expect to be a challenge? Well, a lot of things, I'll say, I'll tell you that. And once again, I will say that I was very lucky and I will explain why. So first of all, the most common and very um, understood issue with having one eye is that you don't have any depth perception because depth of perception takes two eyes because you need two points of reference in order to create a three-dimensional image. So my world is absolutely flat. Two I dimensions, yeah. What did I say? No, no, I was just agreeing with you, sorry. Oh yeah, sorry, I thought we said something wrong, yeah. So yeah, I have only two dimensions, which effectively means that I cannot understand if something is closer or further apart from the other just by looking at it, and I will explain what this means, but effectively that is one of the important ones. Also, um, it impacts a lot of things that you couldn't think about, like for example, sense of balance, because ma much of the balance, of course, is handled by your ear, but humans also in fact uh, have a lot of issues with their balance when it comes to their eyesight now why i was lucky i was lucky because i was born with it everything that i have experienced and i will we can go into detail later on about that is much better for me because i had a lot of years and also my childhood years for my uh, uh, essentially brain to adapt and create new tricks um, in order to um, uh, make it essentially easier for me to be able to do what I'm doing. Yeah, absolutely. So essentially you started to to develop methodologies and ways of encountering. So for example, something that I've observed, because of course I live with Demetrius, I see a lot of these kinds of things. Um, something that I've observed is when you pour water into a glass, you make sure that it's touch the rim of the bottle is touching the rim of the glass before you pour. Well, I'm touching it with my finger because effectively there is a very good chance that I will throw it on the table <laughs> behind the glass or in front of the glass. It's very common, yeah. Oh, it is very true, yeah. I think your game just went up rather than down oh. there. I'm so sorry. We've got a little bit of a sound, fuzzy sound issue today, guys. Sorry about that. What's that now? Oh, that's much better. Yes, you're much clearer. I fixed it. This is the so. joy of Zoom because it's it's automatically trying to trying to make things easier, but actually what it does is just makes things fuzzy. So sorry. Do carry on, Demetrius. That's okay. So yeah, that is part of the uh, lack of three-dimensional vision. Um, but there are other things that people don't think about when it comes to three-dimensional vision. Uh, for example, crossing the street is not the same. It does not happen the same way that it happens to people. Even walking is different in many ways because when you walk, you can understand the height of the floor in front of you, so you know how far your foot should go and when it should land. For me, it's a matter of exploration every time I put my foot down and I did used to be when I was a child in fact drag my feet sometimes because not because I like to drag, I mean okay kids like to drag their feet anyway but um, I had the problem because I couldn't understand in fact how far that apart it was and that's why one of the reasons one of the probably the most major reasons I don't like running because running means that a I'm exerted which means that my mental faculties which I will go down to that on a second are impaired 
and it also can damage me a lot because as you know very well janet the biggest and the worst damages i get in my life is ankle sprains i do that all the time even over staircases or going up staircases going down staircases or anything like that so yeah it is quite a trouble on that absolutely so to extrapolate for a character who has an eye patch for a character who has one eye difficult terrain is a whole bunch more difficult anything that is not a flat predictable surface can lead to you stumbling it can lead to you falling anything that requires depth perception even simple things like handing somebody something or pouring uh, water into a glass all of these things have a level of difficulty attached to them beyond anybody with two eyes because you're living your life in two dimensions it, it changes changes the way that you um you respond to the world essentially it changes a lot in fact the way that you do things and that's where i was going to for it so this is what people that have one eye and i know that because i have talked with a lot of people that had one eye after after me and i in fact when i was younger i used to be consulting with people who lost their eyes later in their life because you know i was coming as someone with experience effectively so one of the things that you will learn very quickly when you actually have one eye is that you have to find alternative ways of understanding the world around you. For me, light and shadows are probably the best consultants about the environment around me, which effectively means that for me, calculating the distance between something, understanding where, where a staircase is or how far something is has to do with me comparing not the actual thing that you automatically understand with three-dimensional vision, but understanding essentially which shadow falls first, uh, how the light essentially uh, hits in a specific surface and what kind of shadows does it leave, how far the shadows extend. Because I know from my, my knowledge of physics and my knowledge of mathematics essentially that extending shadows are different depending on where the light is coming from and how far away it is from that. So you automatically see the world that is not about what you're visualizing, but it's actually about what you can extrapolate from the information which does not have to do with distance, but it has to do with uh, uh, essentially length as you perceive it in, in space and time. So there's a it's lot a of processing power going into that. A lot, a lot. And uh, it was very interesting because I had to learn about concepts like, for example, light refraction or shadows much earlier in my day. And a very interesting thing that my father used to uh, have fun with, with, his, with his friends a lot was that during high summer, in Greece, like 12 noon, when the light comes directly from the top and there is no shadow to be found if you are in the open air anywhere, I tend to, I, I, I was going back to four legs, to like four feet, to use my hands and feet to walk. I, I was able to walk just fine and then suddenly you'll see me actually just crawling again because I wasn't able when I was very young to calculate and understand the, uh, the salam. So apparently I was overcome with fear about what's going on because suddenly everything was flat <laughs> it was a problem yeah yeah absolutely and again these are the these are the kinds of things that people forget when they make one-eyed characters um and we'll be talking a little bit more about common mistakes that you've seen because i know there are a lot of them we've chatted about this before um but let's talk now about some of the social challenges of having one eye because of course you were born with one eye which means that you've you've had it your whole life it is normal for you but for a lot of people, it's it's not normal and it's not something that is normally seen. So, first of all, well, I was born with it. Doesn't mean I haven't struggled with it for a very long time. Um, just to give you some context, guys, I was born in Greece. Greece is a country with very little diversity. And it was to be a country with very little diversity, even less diversity when I was young. We were a 100% white country uh, of uh, people that do not understand necessarily the issues that we have in the modern world right now. Um, in social structures, people will always try to find a way to overcome and become uh, go over essentially everybody else and create a hierarchy. And having one eye automatically put me in the bottom of that hierarchy. Um, when I was born back in 1982 and during the 80s, understanding of uh, disabilities was not as advanced as it is right now which effectively in many cases it meant that i had to struggle with people that would be making fun of me completely and utterly bully me throughout the school throw me around and drag me around because they knew i was actually not able to, com to compensate so easily so it was not an easy time at all and i understand very much how people are when they are bullied because you know what i lived it for a very long time not in high school but 
from like three years old. Sure. So even even from a very young age. A very very young age. I have to admit, it became it has made me very stronger. And in fact, this is the reason I also got very interesting in psychology, which is something we can discuss afterwards. Um, I was very lucky to have two amazing parents, which uh, found the ways to arm me with the best tools one would need to essentially uh, go through the situation. But yeah, um, social being a social pariah was a thing for a long time. And also think about the fact that you were a boy in the 80s that couldn't play football. I know that sounds stupid right now for many of you. By, by football, I mean Amer not American football. Soccer. Soccer, exactly. For Americans, yeah. Yeah, because as I said before, I don't like running. Think about playing soccer and I'm calculating distances and the ball. I have sprinted so many ankles when I tried to do it. But at some point, I just stopped. I was like, it does not worth my time. I also, at some point, ended up having both my hands in plaster for six months because I broke both of them when I fell. It was very hilarious because actually somebody pushed me when this happened while I was playing soccer. So he had to do all my coursework or my homework for six months. Oh but I still, I couldn't even scratch my nose for six months, which is quite painful, trust me. Oh my gosh. Yes. That's crazy. So upbringing, obviously, you were you were marked out as different. And if your characters are um, are born with this uh, with with one eye for whatever reason, or if they lose an eye early on, this is definitely something that they may have to contend with. Um, and as you heard, Dimitra said, even even in the eighties in Greece, this was still a problem. Imagine what it must have been like in sort of medieval times, right? Oh, Where there was certainly. there was a lot of stigma and sort of uncleanness attached to the concept of disability. It was not an enlightened time. That's why they call it the Dark Ages. Um, but again, if you're creating characters in those kinds of settings, just consider what the perception of them will be. What I but would... also consider, before I would like to say also that also builds character because the thing is that there are many types of disabilities, but disabilities have to do with the face in general from people I discussed as well are the ones that are always very evident because A, that's the first thing that people see of you. This is the first impression that people have of you. And in many ways, this can actually be something that will stick for you for a very long time and it takes a lot of time to change it as an impression. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So consider that your characters also will have quite a strong understanding of themselves if they were to survive this and become stronger through it. Yeah, totally. Um, there are other social challenges as well. For example, sorry, the cat's purring into the microphone. For so example, um, when Demetrius and I go to a restaurant with other people, we have the where do you want to sit, Demetrius question. We actually we call it the dark side, the side that yes. you can't see. So um, you... And it is a social challenge as well. It is, but just to clarify from a technical perspective, when you have one eye, because you still have to be able to acquire balance of your body, your eye tends to actually focus towards the middle. And now, in fact, this eye does not have any muscular movement anymore. I cannot move my eye left, right, up and down. It's kind of locked that way. And that's why when people say, look at me straight and I'm looking at like that, like I'm looking at you straight right now, but it does not feel like I'm looking at you straight because my, my whole face got tilted. Even my muscles on my back actually are tilted right now because my head is always like that. And the reason for that is because having one eye, in fact, lowers even more than would you think the area that you can actually see. Sure, your, your If it was in the middle, yeah. exactly, yeah. Your, uh, the, the, peripheral uh, vision, yeah. The peripheral, well, yeah, the cone in general is actually much shorter because it's only because of your nose, because at some point your nose actually does stop you from being able to see on one side. And the other side, essentially, I can see all the way to here. So essentially, I can see this is this is my, the, the angle I can actually see. It's very little compared to other people, which makes it very hard. And that's why I can, I, can, I should always sit on a corner that can actually allow me to see the people opposite to me and left from me. If you sit on my right side, you you are as good as dead. I cannot see you for for anything. Yeah, absolutely. And um, uh, somebody mentioned in the chat, I think it was Lara Lipin, that um, approaching you from the wrong side. Um, you can get ignored, you can get accidentally knocked in the head, um, as has happened to me occasionally. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's or, just... Or scare the heck out of me. Yeah, That's... exactly. <laughs> if I want to be a particularly bad, naughty wife, I can approach Dimitri from the dark side and then spook him. Um, and that kind of thing, if your character is on a battlefield, if your character is, um, is you know, uh, in a, involved in a 
stealth mission or something. There's there's a lot of considerations there for where you're building characters as well. There are bonuses there, though. We can talk about them later. on. And uh, let's talk about that right now, then. So what are the, the, some of the things that you are better at because you have one eye? Where does it help you? Or where could another one-eyed character be shown to really excel? These are the superpowers here. So I, I can think of three things out of um, hand very quickly. First of all, and that's a funny one, you don't get double vision when you're drunk. So you can be blind drunk and still can see perfectly fine, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> Not that I drink that much, but when I did, I was able to see clearly. Secondly, because, and I don't know, I honestly don't know if that's something that people de develop if they actually lost their eye later in their life. But for me, my right eye has an ability which my doctors described as quite weird, but my iris can actually expand about 200, 200 times more than anybody else. Be the reasoning that the doctors gave me when they asked them about that, possibly because there is a specific amount of light that you need to be able to have inside your eye in order to have a clear image and because of that in fact your eyes are able to expand much wider your iris the beauty about this is that during night i can see way better with very low light vision so essentially you can say i can also have like all, almost low light vision from dnd i can see very clearly i can i can discern contrast much clearer than anybody else in fact as well uh, and in addition to that i am quite a good marksman when it comes to things that do not have to calculate distance. So bullet-wise, I'm really good at that because I don't have to struggle with essentially vision or closing my eye and anything like that because I am used to flatness, so I can easily hit something that is actually straight as long as the two dots of the gun are on the same side. For me, it's super easy to actually hit anything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there are, there are spaces where it can be a real advantage. Now, the other one is spotting camouflage, isn't it? Yes. In many ways, because I don't, I don't get the effects that people get from three-dimensional vision, and also my brain processes images a bit different, so it doesn't get those um, kind of like, let's say, um, uh, mental um, reconstructions that you do with two eyes in order to form an image, which essentially means for me things are clearer, are simpler in, in terms of how I understand them. Yeah, so essentially when Demetrius looks, and correct me if I'm wrong, when Demetrius looks at a three-dimensional scene with two-dimensional camouflage in it, he sees that two-dimensional camouflage much clearer yeah. because he's already used to filtering between three and two dimensions. Yeah, essentially, it, 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 I know the, secret, the little um, things, the little notices that you, would, you wouldn't understand because you never had to deal with them. But for me, it's very clear. I would say this is a two-dimensional image. That's not, that's not real, essentially. Sure. So you can spot the shadows and where the shadows yes, aren't, essentially. Exactly. Yeah. So these are all things that if you're building one-eyed characters, you could absolutely use to to really show where they do excel. Um, and again, you know we... mm? that the Nazis, in fact, at the Second World War, hired one-eyed men to become snipers. They was, had that, the whole core of them. was that because of their superior marksmanship? Yes. Oh, there we go. There you go. So one-eyed snipers, people, that's where it's at. Don't don't give them a sword. Give them a gun and a high position. No, don't give me a sword. Sword <laughs> is something I use in order to train myself, but it's really hard. So there's when we talk about one-eyed characters, everybody goes to pirates and eye patches are so tell us about eye patches what are they like itchy <laughs> damn I'm... itchy what well, they that's what they are um um so the easiest way to describe this is that if you are missing your eye from your eye socket it is the equivalent and it looks very much like it feels very much like it i don't know if it's like very disgusting for you guys but essentially it's very much like your mouth it's like having a second mouth or your eyes Okay. Which effectively means that because your body keeps that location lubricated in order to keep essentially healthy and clean, it's wet. If you wear an iPad, this iPad will very soon be soaked. And if it's soaked and it's warm, it becomes itchy. So you have to have very good hygiene if you don't want to, in fact, have secondary infections, which I wish to have all the time when I was a kid. Because you know how kids are about putting their fingers when they're supposed to. Well, I was putting my finger exactly where I was not supposed to. So, yeah. 
uh, eye patches are a tricky one. You have to keep it very clean and very like good. So essentially what you can expect for your characters is either they're going to have a lot of problems with the empty eye socket or they're going to be very fastidious about keeping it clean. Um, the other thing that it's worth mentioning, if you have one eye, you still usually, unless the tear ducts have been damaged, you still produce tears. So you will, if you cry, you cry from two eyes. And also if your, your eyes, the other one. if your eyes water, you, you still get um, eye water from both sides. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, absolutely. That is, um, it's a truth, people. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's things that people forget. So yeah, eye patches may look cool, but they are freaking uncomfortable. Um, they also, if they're not fitted well, they can really cut into your head, right? They can, yeah. I, I mean, there are three different types of eye patches in terms of how they hold. There are effectively ones that are completely straight that go around your head. There are some, some that actually go diagonally, but all of them have problems with your uh, um, uh, with your hair in one way or another. So consider how your character is wearing the eye patch and why. Yeah, absolutely. Now, it's worth mentioning at some point, because I'm sure somebody in the chat will say this as well. There are people who wear eye patches who do not only have one eye or who do not have blindness in one eye. There is um, anecdotal evidence to suggest that pirates would wear eye patches so that they always had dark vision accessible. So when they went underneath the uh, the ship, they'd just flip up the eye patch and shut their their bright eye so that they could see immediately. Um, so there are uh, other reasons to wear eye patches, eye, but yeah. Keep in, uh, uh, on that remark, because your iris can, I mean, at least my iris can extend very much. If I'm in darkness and somebody flips on the lights, I can get blinded. Blinded. Oh, it hurts a lot as well because it hits on the back of your eye and it is also quite painful and can actually bleed to a migraine as well. So yeah, it's, it, it, it's an extreme case, but it can happen. You have, in general, increased sensitivity, don't you? So you get eye strain more easily as well. It makes sense, doesn't it? I yes. mean, you, you only have two eyes to uh, soak the same, uh, eye, uh, the same, let's say, light, and you have to do the same thing with one eye. It yeah. becomes harder for that eye. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and what about glass eyes and prosthetics? They are a source of humor often within, um, <laughs> within media. Glass eyes. Almost always, people people include a glass eye so that it can be funny. It's it's just it's one of those. It's like a banana. I don't know why, but tell us the truth about glass eyes. What are they like? Um. So. Don't gross first us of out. all, what? I said don't gross us out. Okay. So first of all, um, in modern times, because I used to wear a glass eye or essentially the equivalent of a glass eye. I will explain what it means. In in most cases, in the modern world is not actually a marble as people consider it to be. It is more of um, a plate that has an eye drawn in front of it. And it's a beautiful process. If you see one of the engineers who create these eyes, they use the most weird and amazing techniques to do them to make them look real and they are beautiful. But uh, essentially they look like balls that you wear in your eye inside, inside from your lid essentially. Um, they need a lot of cleaning, of course. They need to be very careful because effectively you're creating a, a cup. It's like living around with your mouth having an orange peel in the front of the time kind of thing, in a way. Um, they tend to move around, so you need to correct them depending on how your eye is built in the, in the back. There are some who are permanent and they are very expensive and they can actually use now uh, also coral in modern times that in fact binds with the eye it doesn't work for my case because they never had muscles but people who lose their eyes later in their life they can in fact use eyes fake eyes which are built with color on the back and what they do is that before they put the eye in they create small micro lesions on the back of the eye they put the thing in then the muscles merge with the eye so they can move the eye effectively as it was real which is really so cool, cool like scientifically speaking yeah um so yeah, there is a lot of history with that, it, and it is true they are super funny. When I used to wear it, and I was in primary school, I used to remove my eye from the thing, and the girls would think I could still see, and I would hunt them down and put it underneath their skirts, their skirts, and they thought I could see underneath their skirts. Of course, I couldn't, but the funny thing is that they thought I would. So yeah, that is. <laughs> That's not disturbing at all. Well done, <laughs> very good. So, I think it's time to talk 
about um, common mistakes because my gosh do people make mistakes for those of you who have just got joined us by the way we are talking about life with one eye and how to create characters with one eye who actually reflect what it's really like to have one eye um, and uh, yeah so let's talk about common mistakes what do people get wrong what do people get wrong well People, I, there are many things that people ask people with one eye. I think that the hardest question for everyone when they approach me is how do you, did you get it? Like mm. it, it's, it, it's interesting because some people are using it as a conversation, like, like an icebreaker. And some people will not talk to you because they need the extreme need to ask this question and they don't want to ask this question. So they just simply don't talk to you. Huh. It's very interesting as well. Like it's two different types of people, essentially. So essentially, um, if they can't ask, why are you different? They won't talk to you. That's yes, what you're telling pretty me. much. It's like, it's better not to touch it, right? They can go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. And it's very interesting because, you know, when you get to, you, you get to get intimate, essentially, you're getting a new girlfriend, for example, in my case. Uh, it's one of the questions that always lingers. You're like, how long will it take her to ask the question? <laughs> <laughs> now I know what that tally is that I found by your bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yep. thought it was something else, but now I know. Now I understand. <laughs> and in terms of um, in terms of things like the practicalities. So one of the things that I've seen a lot is people with one eye doing a lot of sword fighting and a lot of sort of very delicate, close rapier work with sword fighting, <laughs> which I just so I don't think is see, possible in two dimensions. Rapier is a different thing than swords mm. because rapier has a point. Mm. As long as you know that for any reason you are within the distance yeah. that the rapier will hit somebody, you can poke at them. Yeah. Poking is easy because it's flat, right? I mean, it's like are you in the frame of the flat thing I see? That you can do. Sword on the other hand, anything that actually like like goes left and right and slashes around, that's a whole other story. Because the sword, and I know because I used to do essentially uh, Japanese um, Iaido. In, in Iaido, one of the biggest problems I had is actually understanding how far away my opponent was or understanding how I'm going to slice them so I don't hit them with actual guard because, you know, you're overcompensating. You're trying to be very close and that actually ends up not hitting them with the blade but hitting them actually with the front of your sword, like with the actual uh, chupa, as they call it essentially in Japan. Yeah. So um, consider also, as Janet, you mentioned before, that in everyday cases, you will have to find ways and tricks to approach things around you. Like even finding my mouse or cooking can be hard because you don't know how far away things are, but you also don't know how tall they are. One of the biggest problems we have, for example, with you is that when you're leaving something at the edge of somewhere, because I don't understand the weight for it, the, the height of it, the chances are it will fall. It is as simple as that. And sometimes, for example, you will see me moving things around, even if they don't need to be moved around, because I know that I will drop it for sure at some point. I'm in a question. So I'm trying to stop it from happening by proactively moving things closer in the center of like, you know, something I control than actually at the edge of something. Sure, absolutely. So there are those, um, there are those sort of practical, practical issues that people forget when they make one eyed characters, like what, what they can do and also their superpowers, because um, as we, as we mentioned before, you know, you really do have superpowers. There are things that people with one eye can do better than anyone else. How important do you think it is that people reflect one-eyed characters correctly within media, within literature, within games and that kind of thing? Well, I think that as with every disability, having proper representation is important. And I'm not thinking because I have any problem with my disability. I am very well, let's say, I have accepted it as the fact of life for many years now. I mean, of course, I used to be a teenager and it was a whole other story back then. I was not accepting it back then. I was a horrible goth. I, I was painting a tear. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, it was horrible. horrible. I'm learning things today, people. This is great. Yeah. I love this. Past the Mitchies, you were a very, very wrong young adult. You were anyway. just an emo, it's fine. Goth very, emo. Yes. Um, But... I think that representation of people with one eye 
in most cases right now in literature, in fact, it's being like kind of like, where do you get your eye? I lost my eye in a combat or in a battle. They don't have actually, they never almost talk about people who lost their eyes because they were born with one eye. They talk about people they lost in battle or, you know, they lost it because they were saving the queen, whatever this might be kind of thing. Or they sacrificed it with a bullet. And you take a bullet in your eye, you're dead by the way, but that's a different issue altogether. Yeah. So essentially, so, yeah. so essentially they use the loss of the eye as the character building rather than not having the eye, which is also character building. Yes. And there is a lot of things. I mean, I, I think we talked about it a bit before, but for me, my eye has literally changed a lot who I am in many ways that people can not realize. And, and it is very simple. And I know, I'm sorry, guys, if it's stupid as an example, but when you are 10, 12 years old or 14 years old and you want to get yourself a girlfriend because you're a young boy and everybody else has a girlfriend, you try to find a way to do it. And if you cannot do it because you are beautiful and because you know that anybody don't think you are beautiful at that point, you try to find other things. Like find out what makes people tick. And that was a, a very important thing for me from a very from the day one uh, of my life. I have started studying psychology and people very early in my life because that was the only way I could actually cope. Not because I wanted to become smarter or anything like that or know what people think. It's more about how can I survive and how can I have a normal conversation without people actually buttering me down putting it down or just simply straight up don't talking to not talking to me so um having a disability of any sort can push people to become better at talking to people or understanding people and have real empathy because for us it's very important to understand how you feel so we can respond to you the way that you should be responded to in order to communicate with us and that's something very important that people actually don't understand. Like people say, oh, people with disabilities sometimes are more empathetic. Well, yes, but it's a, it was a need. It was not something that, you know, it was not a hobby. It was, it was a survival thing. <laughs> sure, so, absolutely, yeah. Uh, and I'm hoping, just by the way, guys, I'm hoping to get more people with different kinds of disabilities, different life experiences to come on and talk because, you know, when we're representing the other, whatever kind of other that is, um, it's really important to try and get it as accurate as possible, simply so you're reflecting reality. And that can also be the source of so many interesting things as part of a character. Like, obviously I'm biased, but Demetrius is freaking fascinating. Um, that's not exclusively because he has one eye, but that has been massively formative in his, his character, in his experiences and everything else. So understanding that is a way to get one more level into another character's shoes which is at the end of the day as writers as role players that's what we're doing you know we're getting into another character's shoes and trying to trying to explore what the world is like from their space so that's one of the reasons that we're we're starting with this because Demetrius lives here so it was easy to get him on a stream <laughs> so um just to wrap this up before we jump to questions because there are a whole ton today what tips would you give to anyone considering writing a one-eyed character? Consider if they lost their eye or they were born with one eye and consider the fact that the very early years of somebody with one eye differentiate them a lot from people who lost their eye later on. Uh, there are many ways that people can lose their eye, many people that can still have their eyes, but effectively maybe like faded or not working or anything like that. If they're not working many times, in fact, also they have ticks related to that, uh, that I have met from people, in fact, like uh, eyes that look like you have strabism, although you don't because you don't actually see anything from there. And also consider the fact that people with one eye, in many cases, will try to find ways to compensate the issues that they have in different ways. And I have very bad hearing, but I have met people, for example, with one eye that have extremely good hearing and they have trained it. I have a guy, which I met, who was literally the Batman, but the actual Batman, because he was using a clicker and with the clicker, he would understand the distance between things around him. And it was fascinating. Oh my God, he wasn't Batman. He was Daredevil. Well, yeah, kind of. Yeah. So effectively, he could use a clicker and he could understand distances based on that. And it was amazing because I tested him when I met him and it was amazing. He was like super precise as well. I couldn't do it for the life of me, but that was really cool as well. Right. And actually, I think you've touched on something really important there, which is just like anything, people with a disability are not a monolith. So 
they will be different. That's normal. They're people first and they just, the disability is part of their everyday life. It is a thing that is part of them, but it does not define them. So, um, yeah, being, expecting, you know, all people who have one eye can X or cannot Y, that's a, that's a trap as well, I guess. True. Absolutely true. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for speaking so openly about this. I've seen a lot of people in the chat saying that this is really helpful. That this is something that's um, that they're finding really insightful and really useful, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we want to do here. We want to do things that are interesting and helpful and useful for you guys. So yay, yay us, yay you, yay everyone. And uh, I think it's time to jump to the questions from you guys, because my gosh, my gosh, there are a lot of them, which is freaking awesome. That's All nice. right, let's see. Oh, I need to move some windows. There we go. E Songbird says, have you ever considered a fake eye, eye patch, or other way to hide or mask your missing eye? Now, we touched on that briefly, but do you just anything to. else you want to say about that? Yeah, so my parents, in fact, uh, wanted me to have a glass eye for a young age. And in fact, one of my dearest memories from when I was young was from my parents leaving me on... Is it okay? Yeah, yeah we're fine. Oh, good, sorry. Um, it was from my parents and said, leaving me to the technic to the technician that would be building my eyes for the whole day because, you know, he needed to try them again and like the shape and everything like that. And I would spend hours and hours on his workshop, in fact, really waiting for him to work on the next version and uh, like that. And I did wear eye patches because I used to be a goth indeed and I used to love it. And I do actually, I mean, goth lifestyle is something I love and music as well. But yes, I did used to wear eye patches and they're really cool. As I said, they have some technicalities there that you need to address, but they're really cool. And um, yeah, I just don't feel that I should do it anymore because I have one of the most beautiful uh, women in my life, in my life, that is your wife. So I don't feel that I, I need to hide it because I know that I have somebody who respects me for who I am. So yeah, I don't need it anymore. I think you're gorgeous. That's you, all. Wife. That's all. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Is loss of depth perception a myth, says Utkiara? We've absolutely covered that. It is not a myth. It is not. No depth perception. To the point that um, when we go to movies, which are 3D, which we do very rarely, Dimitra sits there next to me, pointing me, saying, is it 3D yet? Is it 3D yet? Because he has no idea. Yeah, I cannot he, see. He can't for see me, it in 3D. For me, when I would go to a 3D cinema, I still have to wear the glasses. But all it does for me is make it darker. I mean, I cannot see it without them because just like it's like very blurry. But when uh, you have a 3D movie, because I have to wear the glasses because they are polarizing, effectively, I see much a much darker muted movie. So that's my experience. Um, also, there is one way for people with one eye to see uh, 3D. There is a single way. There are some sort of GIF animations that take an image and very quickly flip it left and right. And these animations, in fact, allow me for the first time to see 3D. And the first time I saw something like that, I cried. Yes. Wow. Wow. NASCAR Laser, on a different subject, says, Demetrius, where did you find that image behind you? This one? This is one of my photos. This is my photography. So I used to be a photographer for many years. Uh, of, like, I come from a family of photographers, but uh, I have specialized in portrait photography. I used to work um, officially in many magazines in Greece and later on in some very famous websites I cannot talk about it. I don't know. Can I talk about them in here? Uh, you can Should. mention the name, yeah. Yeah, I used to work as an official photographer for Suicide Girls in Europe. Suicide Girls, by the way, is um, alternative, alternative. Um, alternative yeah. fashion, essentially. Alternative lifestyle. Well, alternative fashion, fashion. Lifestyle, yeah. yes. So yeah, um, so yeah, I used to be a photographer for many years. Yeah, that is one of his many stunning pictures. Is Demetrius Romeo photography still up? I'm not sure, honestly. Uh. Well, that will consume my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we're hoping that Demetrius will have more time again for photography in the future. It's one of his passions. So um, he has a lot, a ton of stunning photos. We should really share them with you at some point. Super Gaming Geek says, how annoying is your nose for you? It's For me, it's annoying having it partly transparent. Yeah, I know. Um, honestly, I don't see my nose so much because I have the edge of my glasses. So I see the edge of my glasses a lot, which I, I know that people that wear glasses normally don't. But for me, it is a constant thing because it changes all the time. And yeah, it can be annoying, but you get used to it, I guess. <laughs> 
Chaos Ticket Sony says, have you ever considered... Oh, we've covered that one. Um, I should really read them before I read them out. Um, are you able to drive? Says NASCAR Laser. Question. Very good question. It's hard. Um, I wouldn't try it in the darkness because in the darkness you don't have any shadows, so calculating distance becomes harder. Also, high speed can be difficult. I do have a driving license, or at least I used to have a driving license. In Greece, the law says that if you have a driving license and you have one eye, you have to redo the exam every year, which is a pain in the butt and also very expensive. So after the first year that I had the license and I have proven myself I can drive, I just didn't. Yeah. So yeah, Too you much can, hassle. but it's really hard and it's hassle, exactly. And it's dangerous. Or at least more stressful because I wouldn't drive very fast because I know my limitations, of course. But still, it can be dangerous, you know, because things are not as easy uh, as it would be if you have two eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Carillion Beyond says, would you ever get a cyborg eye if it became possible? Absolutely. And not even, even if it was to, in fact, see, I was seriously considering at some point putting a camera in my slot because I do have a slot and I don't use it anything. I could hide things in there. Literally, I can hide something the size of... Well, the size of an eyeball, actually. Yeah, something pretty the size much of like eyeball. some. Like, it actually will be. It's a bit bigger as well because I had some corrective surgery at some point. Because as I said before, my parents really wanted me to have an eye that it looks real, and for many years they got me into surgery upon surgery to fix it. And then at some point I was like, just leave it. It's fine. <laughs> so yeah, but that means actually I do have a socket quite bigger, so I, I have space, and I would definitely do that if I, if I was able to. My mother has a bionic eye. Just... That, but that's an actual bionic eye. That's it's an actual thing. bionic eye. Uh, na oh, there was a second part, maybe with a laser gun built in. Oh, yeah, baby. Absolutely. <laughs> that would be a yes. Uh, NASCAR Laser asks, would a one-eyed character be better at using scopes on weapons like snipers? Yes. Yes. I'm really good at shooting things. <laughs> maybe a weird question, says Italia. But uh, have you noticed if animals react differently to you or your face? That's an interesting question, Natalia. Yes, not all animals. Some animals. Horses, for example, really had a very hard time compensating with the fact that I had an eye. And so I know because I used to use work in a stable for six months, so I know for a fact. So it did take some time to get used to me, but they did get used to me. It was interesting. Do you know what really has a problem? Facial recognition software doesn't oh. like Demetrius at all. You know the passport queue where you go with your automatic passport? It just sits there and the camera's like rrr, 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 and it's trying to find Demetrius' head and it's like there aren't two eyes. That means there's no head. Yes, um, pretty much. So and they become a bit better lately. I think they have realized that, you know what, why these people are still fa always failing and now they know that probably one eye people do exist in this world. That's not the only marker. So they did become a bit better lately with the new machines, but the first machines, my God, some years ago, I honestly have to say that I don't think I have passed a single time without having to go through the actual guard. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, Keisha Tam says, I just found out that it's possible to use augmented reality glasses to give depth perception. If someone proposed it to you, would you consider it? Absolutely. Yes. Follow-up question from Carillion, can you use VR? I can use VR. Um, I don't get, of course, the three-dimensional part of VR. It's a different experience for me. And it's also a bit difficult because uh, because most VR headsets have a very extended nose because they are essentially used for people to look at straight. So for me, I have to wear the actual headset a bit to the tilt left, it, yeah. tilt it, and it hurts your nose a bit because actually you're pushing it against your nose. But I do, yeah. And I do have a VR set, but we're not using it that much because of that reason, because it's a bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Saruka says, do people uh, you meet react differently to you? Now, we covered this a little bit. Is there anything you'd like to add? Um, first impressions are very important for humans. And you don't do the best first impression when you have one eye because people consider you automatically strange or, you know, not. they're not aware of you in the grand scope of things. Um. But having said that, as I said, I have learned how to compensate. You become very friendly and they get used to you. And I tell you what, not. they don't forget you. You are memorable. They don't forget me. In fact, that was true. I mean, I was thinking many times, how can I commit and cry and go away, get away with it? It would be very hard because it would always be, it's a guy with one eye. How many do you know? <laughs> Even if you're wearing a mask, we can see you have one eye. So yeah, that sucks. 
I love that that's part of your thought process. Tanguin asks, what about archery? Pros, cons? Archery is a bit harder um, because archery has to do also with perception. Uh, it requires depth perception, but also requires understanding of, of distance because of the curvature you have to calculate with your bow. So in close distance where the bow, in fact, fires straight, it's easy. The moment you go to the distance that you need to actually curb it, then you need to... I, I did. Uh, I, I do have a bow, by the way. Uh, I did used to walk the distance so I get an understanding of the distance beco before firing. Yeah, Lara Leapin adds, you would make a great smuggler of small items. Yes, I would. I, I, I used to think that I would be the first Johnny Mnemonic kind of character. Like, not inside of me, but inside of my eye, nobody would think about <laughs> looking at there. Love it. Uh, do you struggle with migraines, headaches, uh, and triggers like uh, fluorescent lighting? Fluorescent lighting, not so much, although it's not my favorite. It does hurt my, it does tire my eyes. So I used to remember, for example, those goth clubs we were talking about. They were a pain when they have UV lights, like also like black lights and things like that. Generally speaking, yes, I do suffer from migraines a lot. Um, I do have to take care of my eye a lot. I have to make sure I change the distance I'm looking much uh, more often than other people just to like move my iris more. But yeah, it's a problem. And also light can tire me a lot. In the end of the day, John knows very well, uh, in like in, in any regular day, my eye is so tired. I, I might not be sleepy, but I need to close my eyes because my eye just had enough. Nothing yeah. Like that. Also, I am a pet audiobook now. Yes, so when are. Demetrius is tired, I will read to him because he's too tired to read himself. Um, and there are some books that just we don't have an audiobook or they're not released in audiobook. So yeah. that is another thing. I cannot read for a very extended amount of time. Yeah. My eye gets tired much easier. So after like four or five pages of reading an actual book, because of the light contrast, uh, the lack of light contrast, it gets very tiring, very, very tiring. We have lots of technical questions about the way that your eye is, like the construction. Um, mm -hmm. So without going into graphic detail, what okay. is under your eyelid, if not an eye? Nothing Just a cavity. right now. Yeah. So it's a cavity. If you want to feel how it feels, it feels really just putting your finger inside your mouth and touching your cheek from the inside. That's the, that's the uh, It's the texture. same texture, yeah. Yeah. In people who lost their eyes later on and they actually used to have an eye, you will have little um, extensions like effectively the muscles Muscle that used attachments. to be attached to the eye. I used to have them as well when I was younger. I could feel them, but they atrophied effectively after a long time and they just disappeared. They just being sucked from, uh, sucked in from the from the actual like you know cavity itself. Yeah, and that answers Chris Arrow's question as well. E Songbird says, what common misconceptions and underestimate, underestimations do you encounter? Well, people think that you cannot, because you cannot understand distance with your eye, that you don't understand the distance at all, which is not the case. As I said before, you find ways to cope. And I have heard people, anything from holding canes or... Uh, as I said, the clicker, or for me, which I took a lot of the physics approach and mathematical approach on that, but you do find ways to cope and you can walk around. There are points that you are it's much harder for you to do that, as for example, um, in extreme light, because shadows become, for me at least, because shadows become quite uh, hard to understand. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Come on, Wolf asks, did Eido help you improve your balance, given that you had only one eye? A lot. A Interesting. Lot. And, can, and Kenzuchu as well. Uh, we got to do Kenzuchu as well and Ninzuchu as well. Because um, one of the things that you also lose a lot when you have one eye is your proper posture. Because of the fact that your head is always tilted a bit, it changes the way that your spine sits. And the way that your spine sits on your shoulders, with uh, shoulders, which actually extends with how your spine sits on your back, and the muscles there, because you're essentially you are dragging by moving your your head continuously, you are dragging all your muscles from your back essentially in a different way, which also affects how you sit or how you stand. Like for me, standing just standing still is actually much harder, and I have to like flick my uh, I flick my legs or turn around or wiggle because my whole muscles essentially are atrophied in one side and stretch on the other. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, 
Chris Arrow asks, is this format, talking about disabilities, going to be a running theme for a certain stream day? I hope it will, since I will find it very informative and e interesting. So I'm hoping that this can be one of the many topics that we talk about in these Saturday streams. We do, um, we have a, a loose series unpacking genres. We talk to a lot of uh, tabletop RPG experts. We talk to writing experts. And I think talking about the other in all sorts of ways, whether that is disabilities or uh, anything else, I think that's really useful when we're talking about characters. So, yeah. I think getting I'm... to know about the world around you that you don't know is very useful, even if that's educational information or if it's about learning about people and other ideas, other cultures, other beliefs, anything. Everything can help you become a better world builder and a better person. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I'd love to... Uh... I'd love to do more on this. Folks, if anybody wants to volunteer as tribute, you can DM me on um, uh, on. Not the Discord. most enticing way of putting it, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, if anybody would like to come on and chat about stuff um, that they think would be useful for the community to know about, disabilities, somebody in the chat mentioned autism, all of these kinds of things, it's very, very helpful for people to understand the other, to write characters in it, and eventually to represent. Because do you know what I wrote about... Um, and my most, most recent novel, I have a character with one eye because I live with a character with one eye, right? It was it was the standard to write what you know. But I'm also hoping that it will throw a little bit of light on what having one eye is really like and like what that experience is like, not from first person, but from, you know, having lived with it, having seen the, those struggles. Because I think people should be able to see themselves in literature. I don't think that's crazy. Absolutely. I mean, literature is creating your own universe, so your universe should be if you wanted to make it feel realistic, you should have parts of reality in it, right? And introduce realities that people do not know about. Yeah. Uh, Kuma Wolf says, when you have, um, since you have advanced dark vision, when you go to movies that alternate between very bright and very dark scenes, do you have to compensate? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, less nowadays, but when I was younger, I remember, uh, in fact, that I used to wear glasses, like dark glasses sometimes in the movies, just to get used to in the beginning. Lara Leapin says, do you think about losing your eyesight more because you don't have a backup, as it were? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it is true. I mean, look, people don't lose their eyes so easily, but any disease of the eye can become very much more difficult because, you know, as you grow older, of course, the eyes are something that definitely be hit and I'm something that I'm very aware of. As yeah, a fact. It's, it's a fear, isn't it? I mean, because if about. I lose my eye, I guess at some point it will be able to compensate. But, you know, my coding career or my design career is gone. Photography. Yeah. Photography will be a thing in the past for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's scary. It's scary stuff. E Songbird says, Janet, does your relationship with others change when they meet Demetrius for the first time? How does your relationship with Demetrius deviate from your pre-Demetrius expectations, specifically looking at roles, responsibilities? For example, being the primary or only household driver. Well, first of all, I hate driving. I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate driving. Um, so I don't drive if I can possibly avoid it. I have a dead car. Um, and the idea of actually hiring a car because I have to, to do something fills me with horror. So um, I avoid driving at all costs. I'm very protective of Demetrius. Um, if somebody crashes, so Demetrius crashes into people a lot because he doesn't see them because he's only got one eye. And when people are difficult about it, Demetrius is like, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, no, you will not speak to my husband that way. Can't you see he has one eye? He is doing his best. You are an inconsiderate. But I get so cross. Uh <laughs> She is. She is really in supermarkets. People should be afraid of her if I'm around. No, it's absolutely true. Like also, if it's I mean, not if it's an honest mistake, but yeah, yeah. So there are many things that you don't think about what you do. For example, Janet is literally my guardian when it comes down staircases because she will hold my hand because she knows that I will be able to see her legs and I will be able to understand where the staircases are. And some staircases nowadays, in fact, and especially in cities they have like things like lines to essentially determine but some of them do not at all and modern architecture although beautiful sometimes is not considered that, like that at all and diagonal staircases for example the crazy board. stairs crazy there's stairs. a set of stairs in london that is super london super Bridge. modern fashionable staircases where uh they run on a diagonal and they're 
that we call them the crazy stairs and I grab Dimitri's arm whenever we get close to them and then we walk down very slowly very rhythmically so that he knows where the stairs are um I also, also oh sorry go staircase ahead. with different distances between each other like that that is absolute terror like I give you an example it is weird for you if you're going up a, 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 a how do you call it the automatic escalators an escalator if it's stopped for me it's insanity yeah the other thing is that um when when we're going to castles and stuff where uneven staircases were intentionally built to make it harder for invading forces to get through a castle oh my god we we go slow people it's slow it's steady and we we get it done eventually but um yeah it's it's a challenge and when i'm walking along with people who aren't demetrius I will point out to them things like, oh, there's a step here, or there's a curb here, or the ground is a little bit uneven here. And they just look at me like I'm mad. Like, are you mad? <laughs> like, what's wrong with you? And I don't even notice that I'm doing it. I'm like, oh, there's a step here, there's this here, oh, there's there's a puddle, because he doesn't see puddles either. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm very protective, and I get very scary if people are rude to Demetrius. And I'm very short, so I think it must look very funny. <laughs> Um, have you tried crossbows? Asks Kuma Wolf. No, I have not. Very cool. I would love to try a crossbow, but essentially I'm guessing that I would be good with crossbows because they're very straight firing and like very high power those weapons. So yeah, they do have that. Like... Oh, sorry. They do have that point and shoot quality, don't they? Yes. <laughs> All right. I think. I think that we are there. Guys, thank you so much for listening and hanging out with us today. It has been an absolute pleasure. Demetrius, thank you so much for being so open about this and about your experiences. Thank you. Uh, you're very welcome. And I'm open to talk to anybody about it at any point. If you have any questions, guys, uh, I, I'm not particularly shy on my opinions, especially, or anything like that. Yeah, so I'll be more than happy to. Yeah, absolutely. Once again, guys, um, my guest today was Dimitris Havlidis, the founder and CTO of World Anvil, and my lovely, lovely husband. I'm a very lucky lady. Um, if you would like to find more about Dimitris, you can not only follow World Anvil, where he does twits, uh, tweets and, and stuff and really posts and things, but he has his own Instagram, he has his own Twitter, so you can go and follow him there and learn a little bit more about his art and the other stuff that he does. And of course, if you've joined us and you're not on World Anvil, go get on World Anvil. We're just about to release a novel writing software. It's the best freaking thing ever. I'm so excited about it. And folks, and we already have some books live. So five. If, five books so far live, guys. And there's a lot that are um, just free to read. So if you want to go read something awesome, you can now do that on the World Anvil platform. Go and check it out. Is there anything you would like to add, Demetrius? Uh, just a little thing about Gold Anvil, since we're here. Uh, we are only two days, I mean, exactly three days until um, well, like summer, summer camp. camp. But there was something very special I've seen lately in the community and I would like to have a shout out about. Our amazing Corillion, who was in fact one of the uh, first people to get also the Man on the Match uh, for Summer Camp 2019, I think. Human of the Match. Human of the Match, to eight, eight, I think it was 18. I can't remember exactly. But regardless, Corillion has created a beautiful, um, uh, uh, essentially, zine that will be going live. It's, it's already the seventh day, I think. It will go live until the end of the summer camp. And it's a beautiful inspiration board that you have to go check it out. I really loved it. I sent it, and it's absolutely amazing. Go check it a look to get inspired and get ready for summer camp. Demetrius, I have a personal question for you. Do tell. Do you have a cat close by? The no. chat is asking for a cat. Now I'm assuming I must have left the bedroom door open because yep. I'm not seeing yep, here they are. We both oh. came out from the bedroom. Yeah, if we leave the bedroom door open, we don't have any cats. Here you are, Pumba. That is Pumba. There you are. We have provided you with cats. We do our best. <laughs> okay, she as well, but I don't, I don't fancy being clawed. No, so. don't. Don't, pick don't no drink clothes. my water. She's dangerous. Pumba drank my water. Yeah. No more water That's for me. That's not yours now. They're little demons, these cats. If we leave a glass on the desk, they'll just Shadow will just go and put a paw in like that, just and then um then that's that's the end of us drinking that water. Did you enjoy that water from that? Thank you. Yeah. Now she's just in you. Cat tax has been paid, says Chaos Tick Kitsune. Yes, indeed, we do our best. 
Demetrius, thank you for joining us. People in the chat, thank you for joining us. The bits and subs have been real to date. Thank you everyone who has thrown things, including Milladarman, Connor Wolf, Plain Our Spoons, uh, Koti CGD and WD Michael for the bits. Mergendor, Basic Dragon, Basic Dragon, Basic Dragon, Hefe Live, Sarukas, Plain of Splains, Spoons, Mergendor, Hefe Live, and Space Cakes. Thank you all for your support, guys. It is wonderful. Thank you so much. Do we have a new boss? Is it just me? We might do. I don't have the Twitch window. I think open. that Kumara Wolf is now uh, <gasps> the boss. Kuma Wolf which is the boss. Means all hail tomorrow, Kuma Wolf. Tomorrow on our stream, we can actually. I uh, give out something and I think we have some very special things to give out like physical things exciting so yes tomorrow we will be going live for the very very last of our summer camp prep streams we're going to be talking about world building primers and world building resolutions so how to world build better how to help yourself world build better and how to share your world building with the world so i'm very excited about this topic topic close to my heart i do hope you'll join us especially as we will be raffling off some amazing stuff thanks to that boss uh, thank you for the host today, Roll Society, Aegon TV, Laura Bones, and Jouer Sans Fromage. Thank you very much, guys. Merci beaucoup. Uh, we are going on a raid right now. So um, if you are on Twitch, you can just sit back and let the magic happen. I'm not sure where these things come from. If you're on wow. YouTube, yeah, that's apparently happening. If you're on YouTube, follow that link and you will find Smunchy Games who are live doing something awesome they are an amazing ttrpg publishing house and they're also part of the world anvil community so go check out whatever they are doing i'm sure it will be incredible they are wonderful guys and uh yeah come join us next week for lots of streams and awesome stuff in the meantime grab your hammer and go and world, go build. world builds <laughs>